All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Evernest Real Estate Investor Podcast. I am your host, Spencer Sutton, and I've got with me, I don't have Matthew, I don't have Gray. I'm handling this solo, but I do have a very distinguished guest, the head of all of our renovations for Evernest on our brokerage side. His name is Craig Bingston. And Craig, welcome to the show. I think you might be YouTube famous now um, that we've, we've had you on our YouTube channel. <laughs> And it is um, complete proof that the camera adds um, 40 pounds to um... <laughs> right. At 40 pounds. I thought it was just <laughs> like one pound. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you're, you're, you're stick thin. So, <laughs> well, it's funny because we, we were sharing the video back and forth in the Slack channel because we we're kind of giving some thoughts as to, Hey, how can we improve the video and all this stuff? And I think Craig's main feedback was I need to wear darker clothes. Uh, so I can appreciate that, Craig. <laughs> and, and the funny thing is at 6'2", I'm never the shortest guy in a group. And yet I was the shortest guy in that group of, um, on the podcast. So That's right. And and it's, fun, it's interesting because, you know, I'm 6'3". Matthew's probably my height, 6'3". Gray, 6'4". And then Tripp, our, our great videographer, is like 6'6". I mean, he's so tall. He's humongous. He, he doesn't even need a gaff to hold a microphone. Or I know. That's right. He's like literally uh, just... Or a he, boom. Yeah, boom. He's just like bending down and holding it in front of our face. No. Uh, so, Craig, great to have you back on the show. This is, I think this is a really important part of the story that we're telling because we do want to... Um, you know, we want to share everything that we're going through when we renovate this house, when we, you know, go to eventually market the property, rent the property. And so for investors out there, so this is a part of our series that we're doing for this Jackson, Mississippi house. And a big part of any investor when they're buying rental property is the reno, is the renovation. And now this is unless you're buying an already turnkey property, one that's already been done for you. Now, if you're doing that, then you're paying for that, right? So most people, most investors are going to buy the house. If they're, if they're a turnkey provider, they're going to buy the house. They're going to renovate the house. They're going to rent the house, and then they're going to sell it to you already, uh, already rented. And so you're going to pay a premium for that. But this is really for investors who are considering doing this themselves, like buying the property, managing the renovation, and then walking through all that or uh, having somebody else do it. Uh, but still, they're buying the property at a discount. So Craig, you're the expert at this. And so what I thought we would do is just show everybody the, the you know, breakdown or talk through the breakdown um, on this podcast about Hey, uh, what this really looked like in, in real life. And you know what, we're, we're probably going to, we might have some change orders. There's going to be some things fluctuate. Uh, but so for, if you're listening on the podcast, this is great. We're going to explain everything. You don't have to worry about that, but if you want to go and see us walk through the document, you can go to our YouTube channel, look for Evernest and you will find it. We're going to have a, uh, we're going to have a, um, a uh, section of the YouTube channel, a channel within the channel um, of just our renovations, just our uh, property walkthroughs. So you'll find it there. And so Craig, let's talk about this. So when we, this is how it goes. We were brought this property. We initially just kind of looked at pictures and came up with a rough estimate of how much we thought the renovation would be. And I'm trying to remember what we thought of as we were talking about it, just looking at pictures. Was it around twenty thousand dollars or so? It was. Um, it was twenty thousand dollars initially um, via yeah. um, pictures from yeah. the seller, and um, I think we even were able to see the house on um, on one of the Zillow or or one of the real estate uh, websites. Um, so we came in at about twenty thousand uh, dollars. It's out of state, about two hundred fifty miles from Birmingham. Mm -hmm. So we sent uh, my contractor out to the house. So sight unseen, had an idea of what the house was going to be like and what it was going to, um, what was going to be needed there. And he went through and he asked me first off, he goes, how do you want to renovate this? And well, we want to renovate it to a rental standard for the area in which the house is. So right. this house being in a 
B plus A minus more of an A minus A plus neighborhood just due to school districts in Jackson. I said we want we want a you know a full renovation. Yeah. We want this house to rent faster than the house down the street, which is um honestly what everybody tries to do for their neighborhood, but by putting in a little bit nicer product, a little bit nicer finishes and getting the house up and done and and, and running as quick as possible is our is our main goal there. So yeah, and this, this about is two a, to three hours there uh, yeah. looking at the house room by room. So. OK, so what happened was we ha- gave him an idea. But I think this part is really important, Craig, because you've got this contractor in Jackson who you vetted, who you trust, who we've used before. And and we were like, OK, we can have this person walk through. It's really important that you do specify. I love the question he asked because he asked, like, how do you want to renovate this? Because there's a big difference in renovating for a rental and renovating for a flip and and then to craig's point there's even a there's even a difference between renovations in different class of neighborhoods i'm going to renovate a c-class rental differently than i'm going to rent this a-class jackson property like we looked at a property in c C c-class and it fell through the deal fell through but uh so so this one came up and great thought on, Hey, we need to renovate this to match the neighborhood. And that is what you really want to do. You want to look at the competition around you and you want to say, okay, this, this is, this is what is going on in the industry. This is what's going on in the neighborhood. This is, these are the properties that people are renting. This is how the shape that they're in. I want to renovate mine as nice or a little bit nicer than the competition. Cause you're always, you kind of, are looking for that edge, especially when we're going to be asking for, you know, two grand a month for this property. Certainly. So he went and, and this was probably within a five day period after we put the, the property under contract, it's, it was contingent upon inspection. You sent your person out there. They spent three or four hours walking through every single room and this scope of work is what they came up with. And just want to let you know if you're if you're listening to the podcast, the total renovation estimate that we received for this house twenty five thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. So, Craig, anything you want to add before we kind of start walking through some of this, um, some of these things? There's different types of scope of works that we do, and this one is a bulk uh, um, scope of work, not a line item. It's a bulk because I'm a little more knowledgeable as to what is needed and what it'll cost. Uh, line item is will show how much it costs to add five blinds and one fan and six outlets in the carport edition. It'll show it line by line by line. And, and we do that for individual investors as well as institutional investors because they want to take the time to break down the pricing. Mm. Whereas, you know, and they want to be able to show um, you know, if they need to save a thousand dollars, what they could take off that and what it will cost because of the experience that we have as investors at, at Evernest and, and in my past life, I could kind of tell you what I need to take off it if it didn't make the, if it didn't make the cut. Right. Yeah. So we can, with your experience, we're able to look at this and go, you know what, we, we do need to cut this thing by about 10%. So where are we going to find that 10%? And we can just walk through and because you already know. I would imagine in your mind with all the experience you have, when you're looking even at this bulk um, scope of work, you can see the the numbers almost right out beside each of these line items in your yeah, mind because you already it, know it how really, much they cost. For, it, in a way, it, it's, it's, it's a blessing and a curse at the same time. So, <laughs> right. yeah. You just have to stay up with all the pricing and make sure you, you know all the pricing. Okay, so let's look at the exterior. Uh, we did a walkthrough of this property on uh, on our YouTube channel. So if you're interested in seeing this property, the exterior, it's a probably about a 20, uh, 20 200 square foot property, uh, big roof. And we walked through, uh, walked all around the outside. So let's just talk about the scope of work on the exterior that we have. I mean, it's nothing really, really big on the exterior. We had some touch up paint. Uh, we had, you know, paint shutters, just exterior doors, anything stand out all, to you? Almost all cosmetic on this. Yeah. Yeah. All, almost all cosmetic. I will say the only thing that we, that, you know, going back, maybe we would have added is a roof. 
and we talked and we talked about that in the in the podcast is you know the roof is going to have to be replaced probably within the next five years so would we have gone ahead and and budgeted for that regardless we know we're going to have to get a new roof the next five years or so correct and if we were to flip the house tomorrow we would put a roof on it before we even put a for sale sign on it yeah that's right we would put a new roof on it it already has new hvac uh, i thought the outside was is was in really good condition really good condition just a really big yard i mean i think we're we're sitting on probably an acre right there so yeah it's a big yard and typically i'm not a big fan of big yards for rental properties but it fit the neighborhood it's you know it's what people are going to expect in the neighborhood they don't they're not looking for these smaller yards i found that in like c class neighborhoods smaller yards smaller you know 12 to 1500 square foot houses are are pretty much the the name of the game in those neighborhoods but in this neighborhood this a neighborhood this yard was perfectly in place with everybody else's most likely it's going to go to somebody that's either uh new to one of the local hospitals uh uh just new to the area when, when, you know, whether it's Nissan or, or Yokohama or Continental Tire or at the many hospitals or universities in town. So they're going to be looking for a bigger house for a family in a great school district. And this is going to fit, check all those boxes right there. Yep. So, uh, so again, not nothing really too out of the ordinary. We are going to, um, we're cleaning gutters. Uh, I know that we had to add some gutters. Was that on our, um, it was not. I, I actually um, proposed some changes today because I was, as we were walking through the house, I had some questions and I, I, I went back over the scope of work and I came up with um, with a few additional, additional with a few things. additions that yeah. luckily we have enough room in our cap rate on this house that um, we might go through with it. So, okay. And, and just know for you investors who are like, this is a common part of it. <laughs> as you're going through and working on the property, you're like, oh, you know what? We should have done this like or this this probably makes sense we know gutters are really really important um and so this is this is something you need on houses trust me i have had rental houses myself where i where i i even let the gutters go one time like i wasn't paying attention to them the tenants didn't pay attention to it and the next thing i knew i had rotten soft soffit and fascia and it cost me a lot more money to replace all of that than it did to take care of those gutters and clean those it was gutters. it was funny because gutters and insulation were the first things i always cut out of a budget and those are kind of the last things i ever want to cut out of a budget now yeah my experience yeah that's right okay so we we walked we're, we, you know we walked in the youtube video we walked all the way around the house scope of the work nothing really out of the ordinary then we go into the carport addition so there was a carport what they've done is they've closed this carport in they've added um ventilation in there so it's heated it's cooled it's really a nice little area kind of like a second living room it is square feet square footage on on that with that with the addition of the insulation and and hvac in the system there i mean really in that room there's not much we're doing we're we're talking about blinds some outlets switches anything else to note no nothing nothing dramatic there the 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 previous homeowner just put in new flooring but didn't update the the house. So, you know, the, the yeah. flooring tends to be a big, a big, big budget number for us. So, yeah. So the flooring was already done. That is something that we should, you know, highlight the flooring yeah, when we a, throughout the house was incredible. Yeah. And it, you know, a 2,200 square foot house at $5 a square foot with flooring um, with LVT down, that's a lot of money right there. Yeah. There's a lot of money. It was really interesting walking and walking through the house because the floor was great. Everything else was just outdated was Correct. old and outdated everything from kind of this the wood paneling <laughs> it, it really looks like the original the homeowner it really yeah. looks like the original homeowner had owned the house up until we did and the house was built in 1970 something 79 or 78 79. I think. Yeah. yeah 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 and that you know but these are the houses that i used to love to buy when i was wholesaling houses i used to love to find people who were like hey you know what this is this how ha- my my parents you know, we've moved my parents out of this house. They never updated it because they didn't care. And we're not going to update it and put it on the retail market. We just want to sell it as is. I loved those houses because it was typically like what we're talking about here is typically all cosmetic. 
<laughs> it's just it's just updating everything and a lot of times we would find we would find great beautiful hardwoods underneath carpet and so All we the could time. just we could just rip that carpet out and have this beautiful pristine hardwoods and be like wow this is beautiful all right so the carport bathroom though needed some work oh my gosh that was um that's always interesting when they add a bathroom in a space that didn't have any mainline drains in it so it's it, that carport area was most likely the um the laundry space originally gotcha, gotcha. okay so there was probably uh, plumbing and electrical out there for laundry but not plumbing for a toilet which requires a p-trap so they elevated the area so there's a step up in there Yep. That step up had gotten a little bit of water damage over the years and um, it basically collapsed and was unusable. So they're going in there, repairing that whole subfloor right there, building a new P trap in there and putting a new toilet and vanity in. So a little well, bit of work, but nothing, nothing that can't be done in, you know, one or two days of work. So, yeah. So l- let me just ask you this. How much do you think that carport bathroom cost us? If you just had to guesstimate, I'm not holding you to it. Maybe, maybe eight to $1,200. Okay. Yeah. So not so bad. No. So carport, not much. The carport bathroom, you know, maybe $1,200. And then next we're moving into the living room. So as we start, we walk from that carport up into the main living room that's attached to the kitchen. Uh, This was really pretty much all cosmetic as well. Yeah. Living room, wet bar, both um, just cosmetic. The two next items right there. Yeah. Um, being a house of the seventies, everybody wanted a bar in their house. So they, <laughs> it's very common to see a little wet bar um, in, in a house. I mean, it was, enter- it was the way they entertain. Yeah. It's the way they entertain. I mean, like- literally it's like a little bar that you could stand at or sit at in a little area. Yeah. Now we said, we talked about this, I think in the video, we talked about, you know, maybe you because we're have residents coming in maybe you would cap off that sink because there's a little sink back there but we're not doing that we're not doing that it just in my opinion it would have eliminated um a place for um where there might be a water um leakage or or damage or something in the future and um just people don't use the house the way they used to use them that way so that's right yeah maybe maybe definitely if we were going to flip that house we might have done something different with that little room yep all right let's walk into the kitchen was we're we're talking about the kitchen now typically people care mostly about like people who are coming to rent properties they want to know what is your kitchen like what are the what's the main bathroom like so let's talk about this kitchen what were the main things that we needed to do to the kitchen um, they had a different type of range in there. So the range sat on the cabinet bases. So mm-hmm. we have to cut out the cabinet, kind of customize the cabinet over there, uh, cut it out so we could slide in a, um, electric range or gas range. I can't remember which one we're putting in there. I think, it's um, a ga- I think it's gas. Yep. And just cutting out the cabinet to make it fit and work. Um, contractor that saw the house, thought the cabinets and the countertops were in good condition. That's one of the things that I kind of question at this high end is that we should have maybe looked a little bit deeper into putting granite in there. And that's part yeah. of the change order that I'm proposing that we, we put a granite in there. Granite will last a lifetime. So how it's much a, more is granite going to be? What were, what, what do we have in this um, estimate to put in for the. Countertops? We didn't have anything for countertops because they were in good condition. That's so right. We they were in good condition, it. but what were the, what was the material made out of? What were uh, it was a, it was a four mica or um, laminate. Yeah, there was nothing wrong with it, but you're right. So how much is it going to cost us to, if we, if we went with that change order, how much are going to cost us to put in those? Um, About $31 a square foot. So um, $1,400, $1,500 to put a new okay. countertop in there. Uh, probably worth it. I oh, 100%. Think. And we'll get value out of that um, now and in 10 years when we, when we go to flip the house. Yeah, that's right. No, I agree with that. I think, I think it's important to make the the kitchen really stand out and and modernize the kitchen as much as we possibly can you know it's funny because i always said that um uh the decision maker in a rental house like this is going to be typically the the female in the relationship um they want a nice kitchen and they want a nice master bedroom whereas um and this is stereotypes good or bad but the the guys look at the garage in the backyard interesting 
Yeah. In, but but the decision maker is we all know who that is usually typically. Yeah, and that's okay. I mean, yeah, I'm, I definitely Al, Allison um, spends my, my wife spends a lot of time uh, hanging out in the kitchen. We gather in the kitchen. I cook probably just as much as she does, but so we both enjoy the kitchen. For all sure. right. Okay, so we walk. So the kitchen's super important, and then right attached to that kitchen was a horribly red. It, uh, was it red or was it? I mean, it was. It was super a, bright. It was a pinkish red that was not a very good coverage. Red's always the hardest color to to cover and the hardest color to paint. <laughs> yeah, because of the amount of pigment. Put, you, yeah, you got to put so many. Yeah, the amount of pigment, and it's you got to put so much kills on top of it before yep. you can paint it and have that paint really, really stick and cover up that red. Yes. So, so yeah, that one, that one just needed some, some good paint in there. And, and the contractor, um, you know, he budgets for that in the paint budget to yep. take care of the, the, the kills or the, or the, or the primer. Yeah. A good contractor will it. know exactly. Like I know that this room is going to require more. And so they're going to put that in the budget. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, just looking through this list, I mean, and we've said this already so much, just cosmetic work. And if you're an investor, like finding a property that just has cosmetic work is a good thing. I had one of our teammates uh, who was looking at a property to buy in uh, Birmingham, sent me pictures last night of this property that he's looking <laughs> at buying. And I can promise you, it is not cosmetic. Like this whole thing is caving in and, um, plus it's a hoarder house. And so hoarder houses make it very, very difficult to really get a renovation estimate because you can't see what's underneath it without removing everything from the house. So you gotta be careful with those. I had a house that was, uh, 1100 square feet that took four dumpsters just to clean it out. <laughs> And I'll guarantee you my renovation budget was not very good on that house. Yeah, that's right. It's not very good, but this one was already cleaned out of super simple. Okay. So we go into the foyer. I mean, really, we're not talking about much ceiling light, some switches and outlet, um, new closet passage hardware. So just some hardware there. Uh, oh no, that's the, well, that's the foyer. Yeah. And then the hallway is again, nothing really big. Then we move on into the laundry room, which is right off the hallway. Isn't that right? Don't I remember that? Yep. Yep. So nothing big there, light fixture, some hardware for the bifold doors, the hall bathroom. We were doing some stuff in. Correct. Okay. So talk about the hall bathroom. So one thing and what do you think, what do you think the bathroom costs? Let's, what do you think this bathroom costs? $3,500. Okay. I was going to say 2000, but you're, you, you, yeah, you're hundred percent. You're a lot better at this than I am. So, okay. So the tub, so the tub surround that was in there was, um, uh, a, a product of the seventies as well too. It was cultured marble. So they had three pieces of cultured marble on the wall that comes off pretty easy. Um, we we're going to do a, a new tub surround in there just as a, uh, the contractor kind of got this one wrong on this. And um, we think that we should go back and, and add some subway tile on top of that instead of a, a plastic surround in there. Or, gotcha. or, so we're, we're looking into that too. And it'll add a little bit to the budget, but not a whole lot. It's only 80 square feet of tile. Yeah, it's not subway tile, the, the subway tile goes up real quick. It'll look a lot nicer. It'll look a lot cleaner. And um, again, it's, it's, it's a good bathroom. It's a good size. Um, and um, just in a, in a you know central location in the house, so nicely done. Good, yeah. So three grand worth every penny to do that in the bathroom. I agree with you that adding some tile. Again, we're doing this for the neighborhood. This is the type of neighborhood, the type of resident that we want to pay two thousand dollars a month. It probably makes a lot of sense. So we're talking about new toilet, new vanity, new sink with faucet new vanity mirror, um, door, like privacy door hardware, I guess. And then you mentioned the, the, uh, all of the surround doing it with tile, new shower control valves. I mean, all of these things are new shower head. All of this stuff is going to be new. So it's going to be beautiful when it's done. Yeah. It's, pr it's probably almost done. <laughs> it is. Um, 
he's just waiting on the go ahead on on the subway tile so gotcha okay and then we've got the bedrooms is there anything like i don't want to spend a lot of time here on the bedrooms because i just remember were they all the wooden no just one just one of just them was one. um just one was set up as the office not a bedroom that's originally. right it's set up as an office so just imagine like 80s late 70s 80s wood paneling for an office it's dark it's dark wood paneling you know if we were going to flip this house we might have torn all this out and and put sheetrock up i guess or or whatever craig but we did yep. not we decided to paint it yep that's correct and it looks great it does i i actually like the look of um the painted paneling believe it or not i think it what are the challenges with paint, painting paneling? Because uh, I'm, I'm imagining you, if you have some loose boards or some bowed up boards, then that's not a great look. No, it's not. So you have to go in there with um, either some nails or maybe some um, glue and just kind of glue it back on there, fill the holes and um, press it up against the wall. And then you have to prime paneling every single time or it will not um, uh, take paint. It'll take paint, but the first time you brush it, it'll all fall off. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want that. No, no, not at all. All right. So bath, so that bedroom, then we had the two other bedrooms because this is a three bedroom, one and a half bath house or two bath house. Yep. Is it and two a lot bath? of times, is it two bath or one and a half? Two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. Yep. So let's talk about the master bathroom. What are the things that really need to be done there? just cleaning it up and making it work it's there's nothing um there's really not a lot going on in there that's out of the norm it's 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 kind of um new toilet new shower new head yep yeah. just making it look pretty painting it up um okay all right it was completely functional so there was really um um really not a lot to do with that okay so any, so, so when you do this, when you, when, when our contractor goes through the house, obviously they're going to, they're doing the exterior, they're walking in every single room in the, um, throughout the house, they're making notes, they're saying this, these are the things we're going to change. They're giving us that estimate and we accept it and we say, yes, this, so we we're able to then negotiate, but let's talk about miscellaneous stuff because I see some miscellaneous notes, like what is what do you typically see when you're talking about miscellaneous and then and then even in, in our house here well it's it's we kind of we call it the, the completion package is what it is gotcha. um, okay with the exception of the full interior paint but the carbon monoxide the smoke detectors the fire extinguisher the ac unit um new light bulbs um switch plates that's kind of the miscellaneous that's going to be on there but um when we're changing out all the um switches that's it's assumed that we're putting new new switch plates on there but miscellaneous is it's something we do in almost every single house because it's not a big big um addition to the the budget so gotcha okay so uh, when i'm thinking about this there's some notes here on this document the notes are the ac unit is almost brand new so we did look at that i mean yep. it was it was uh manufactured in 2021 Yep. So we we're good on that. And it's like, it looks like a five ton. It's gigantic. It's it uh, is huge. It's it as is, big as you can get. <laughs> it's as big as you, it's like a car out there. It's beautiful though. It's a split unit. So that's all new. HWH is almost brand new. Hot water heater. <laughs> hot water heater. I should have known that Craig, but I didn't. <laughs> so HWH, the hot water heater is almost brand new. This is important. All windows in the home operate as they should. Now, if we were going to flip this house retail, we would probably be replacing some of these windows, but there were no leaks. There was no rotten wood, no water damage that we could tell in any of the windows. They worked. Right. And so. Open, tip, close and lock. Yeah. Open, close and lock is what you want. Now, some, some of these houses, some of it's going to be a little bit tougher. If you're buying properties in C-class neighborhoods, um, you may have, somebody may have painted over the window so many times that it's very, very difficult to open them, but you want all of those to open. Like this is yep. going to be something you definitely have to have them open. It's a, you know, hazard if they don't. And if you're renting the section eight, 
Yep. They're going to ding you for that and yeah. say the house doesn't, doesn't qualify. And, and, and if you have a house that is painted shut, um, it's going to cost you about $75 a window because it's going to take two to three hours for um, somebody to go in there and, and, and cut the years of paint off and, and slowly open the window so they don't damage the, the trim because you could rip wood and metal and break glass yeah. and you know especially when you get into a 1950s house that has a single pane casement which are the old crank out windows um you got to be real careful with those because you could literally push panes of glass out of those gotcha okay um there were some additional things underneath the notes here on the scope of work we're gonna uh like so walk through this tearing around all vents and chimney on roof now we talked about this in the video yeah. Um, it's just an added protection to get up on the gotcha. roof, walk the roof, tar around all the vents and chimney on the, you know, just to add a little bit of protection because we did notice the, the roof was aged a yeah. little bit. So, yeah. just, so we, we want to preserve it for those five years. Yeah. <laughs> and so part of that is, is doing this. I mean, just imagine you also really, when you're thinking about roofs and you're thinking about HVAC units, um, depending on where you live, you need to be thinking about the area that you're buying properties in. So Jackson, Mississippi, extreme weather in the summer beats down that heat and humidity will wear a roof out. Um, you know, the, the winters don't get so bad. So there's not a lot of snow or anything, but definitely it will, it, it gets cold in Jackson, it gets hot in Jackson. And so you're using your HVAC unit, uh, you're using all this stuff. And so there's a good bit of wear and tear on these things. Yeah, certainly. Uh, if it were a house that I was keeping for myself um, that I was living in, I'd probably opt for a metal roof because it was a pretty straightforward roof, not a lot of um, hips and valleys, and and that's the forever roof. So, well, and they're about a third more than a, an asphalt house. So, but it's not my house. Well, but think about this: that would this even would a metal roof really fit in this neighborhood? Possibly. I don't. The house don't, had a contempt. The, the house had a contemporary look to it, so. It always kind of, yeah. You know, you just uh, do a color match. Roof. Yeah, I would say before you before, especially with like on a rental. I, I, yeah, I, it's I, it's I, a huge expense. It's a big expense, but I've definitely seen people do it. There was an investor in Birmingham. Uh, this person's no longer uh, living here or or, or uh, buying houses and selling them to people here. But one of the calling cards that he always had was red roofs on all of his rentals. So he would buy oh. these houses. He would rehab them put red uh metal roofs on them and so that you always knew these were his houses and he'd sell them to investors all right craig anything else you want to talk about here this has been great um no i think we um we captured most of it um i do say that we i i do have a proposal that we need to go and take a look at um um a couple extra items on the house and I'm just kind of pulling up that right now. Yeah. So these um, are, these are change orders that, um, Craig, I saw in Slack where you were yeah. sending that out. Yeah. How do you, and so I'm, I'm, I'm imagining as we're doing this for clients, some of this comes up also with clients. So we send them the scope of work, we get into doing the work and then we say, Hey, well, when we were doing the work, we noticed this and this. And so we want to, bring these to your attention um is that how it typically works with an investor it is um and before i even bring it to the the investor's attention i will put it on a change order i will have the pricing on there i'll say hey these things were uncovered or and or missed i mean honestly it, it, or, or just not thought of you know missed and not thought of are, are kind of synonymous but um but you will miss some things oh, like well, any, if you, if you go and watch any <laughs> overproduced television show without uh, rehabbing houses, it's always something that sticks out. Like it's always kind of a dramatic part of the show when they're like, Oh yeah. my goodness, we realized this, or we realized this. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> but just know that, that, that it does happen from time to time. So, well, listen, I want to, I appreciate you being here, Craig. This is, if you want to see a, an updated video, we've also recorded updated video of our walkthrough. So we were there a couple of weeks ago. They were halfway done with the property. They had painted it. So we did a walkthrough of the property. You can see that video on our YouTube channel. And then we're going to go back 
for a full walkthrough and completion video once it's done. And, and we're only two weeks in. So tomorrow will be two weeks when, when we were there. Uh, so this, this job is getting knocked out and we'll be ready to market this probably property probably in another week, I would think. Yeah. We'll have to make sure it's a nice sunny day so we can fly down there. <laughs> yeah. Well, Craig just got his pilot's license and he's trying to talk people into flying with him. I, I'm going to have to ask my wife. I showed her the plane and she was like, no, that's not happening. Uh, but, I, but I asked her, I said, would you fly in this? And she said, no. Now I'm a different story. She might be okay with me flying in it, but Craig, I trust you. I don't think Matthew's going to get in the plane, but we'll, we'll see. Well, I don't think Matthew would get in the plane after uh, me having thousands of hours of, of <laughs> yeah, that's right. You can have, time. you can have a hundred thousand hours. He's not doing that. No. All right, Craig, thanks again for being yep. uh, here. Check out, the other episodes of this podcast where we're talking about our Jackson property. Again, we're going to be buying houses in all of our markets. We're looking um, diligently for new deals. Once we find them, we'll start rehabbing them. We'll fly there. We're going to do full walkthroughs just like we're doing for this Jackson property. And we're going to talk about the entire thing. You know, what went well, the mistakes we made, all of these things are just a part of this process and we just want to give you an inside look as to uh, how it all turns out so we will be back with another episode of the Everness real estate investor in another week and uh, talk to you all then <laughs>